Oh, hello and welcome, FPL managers, and welcome to the Zona Weakness for Game Week 10, brought to you by Ghana Football Fantasy and powered by Fantasy Football Scout. Today, for the Zonal Weakness, of course, uh, uh, Zidane's dad, who goes by their Twitter handle, joins me. Um, welcome. I think you're muted. Hi, thank you for having me in the show. Uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good as well. Great, great. And how was your game week? Uh, it was one of the best game week for me. Um, I was oh, wow. ranked. Yeah, I think in game week wise, I was ranked twenty eight thousand probably. So I played uh, wild card in game week eight, and I removed Haaland, and I uh, had a decent team. So I got like hundred nine points. Uh, with the Salah wow. captain and uh, yeah so everyone returned for me except I think Cash and Turner but yeah it, I, I can't complain it was a great <laughs> game week uh, you know because when I removed Haaland obviously it was a big decision when I had to take it I did some analysis and felt like probably I can take a chance and although I did not made a distributed team like all the Holland draft usually you have like eight good attacking players and uh, right. probably you have a strong bench but I just um, made in a sense that I can get back Holland in two three transfers so uh, I mean it is strange it was stressful when you <laughs> remove Holland <laughs> but it actually worked out and obviously I am I, I think unless uh, I bring back him, it will be difficult <laughs> uh, the other times, no. you know. <laughs> Not true. I mean, brave decision and it pays off. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because uh, I think it was a it was a courageous decision. And to be honest, I'm a bit jealous right now. You got 109 points. Um, so, yeah, um, I, 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 I wasn't lucky because I still kept Haaland and I didn't take Salah. So there you go. And you kept in Salah and you got in Salah and you did not take Haaland and Haaland didn't deliver. So I think um, fortune favors the brave, as they say. It. So it's, it's, it's great that you do it. But yeah, glad, glad, really good. Um, so let's get it straight into the show. And uh, thank mm -hmm. you so much again for joining. And audience, thank you so much for watching, of course. So this is the Zonal Weakness for Game Week 10. And of course, we will be doing a lot of players that are we're going to cover. But before we do that, please do give us a follow on Twitter and a like on Facebook, but also subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, we would appreciate if you do it because any support that comes from you, any follow or like or subscribe that uh, you know that you give, we really appreciate it. So thank you so much because it helps us and it encourages us to do a bit more. And all the data. The zonal data and everything that you see uh, here are from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. Uh, if you are interested in the membership and if you are interested in data analysis and look at the underlying data, you know, the kind of decision that Zizan's dad just made uh, based on the data that he looked at, thinking that Haaland is not going to be a good option. These are the kind of data that you might find on Fantasy Football Scout. So yeah, please do have a look. And if you're interested, just click on the link below in the description section and you'll get a 30% discount. So yeah, you shouldn't be waiting any longer. Just get the membership of Fantasy Football Scout members area. Right. So let's get to the show. Um, this is it. And this was the transfer suggestion that we made back in game week uh, six. And it was Alvarez. Um, so what do you think about this decision and how do you think uh, it has panned out? Yeah, I mean, it was a great uh, suggestion and I think it worked out the people who transferred it. Probably not immediately helped in Game X6. I think I also transferred in uh, him like in Game X6. It was frustrating to get the one point. But later, uh, I mean, the suggestion was based on due to KDB unavailability, I guess. So, and he actually returned well, uh, 20 points, I think. Probably Watkins gave uh, more point than him in the period, but that is that is another uh, another topic to discuss, right? Because it was twenty three pointer out of nowhere, and uh, that's like one game week to happen, right? Not all the yeah. time you can get it. So I think it was a perfect uh, decision. And in my draft, I actually had uh, in my wildcard draft, uh, actually I can't own him. Uh, rather than Holland, and he actually he's actually ticking along nicely. So I think it's a good a good transfer in, and um, 
uh, it, it paid off, I guess, five point per match in a striker's in a striker place. It's it's a good return in my eyes. Yeah, I agree. And I think Watkins was the only one that kind of outscored him, to be honest. But yeah, um, I think then we kind of uh, already suggested Watkins as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's in the next game we review, but yeah, we'll have a look at it and see. How yeah, it and his price was actually lower. six point During that time, I think it was 6.7 yeah. or 6.8. So in that price, it's very good return. Yeah, and I think the people who actually went with him from gimmick two or gimmick three yeah. are the ones who have actually benefited uh, from it uh, over a long period. I mean, at least over the, the last eight or nine period gimmick. So that's great. Yeah, and I think I think it's a five points per match. If you're in, in, in hindsight, it might not look great, but if you are asked in gimmick six that if uh, Alvarez is going to give you five points per match, would you take it? Everybody would happily take it. I think, yep. Yeah. Anyway, let's go and let's see how the zonal looks like. So there, here it is. Um, so what stands out, brother? Of course, Arsenal. If you see in the see it <laughs> everywhere, it's white. That means um, you cannot, you cannot not. But it's it will be very tough for you like to go without uh, any Arsenal asset. Probably you need a big couch. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, their uh, points are distributed. But it's still it's showing that they are very good asset to transfer in or if you have them or you are bringing them so i mean obviously saka although from his flank it's number five but we know saka is in penalties as well right so and he can do a banger from anywhere so i think he's a great shout and i i like um the fact that martinelli and he's looking sharp as well and i think jesus injury is not that big right so if he starts uh, martinelli could be a great shout as well and with zonal uh, he it is like i think second um second in um uh in, in there right so in terms of I the rank yeah in terms of the rank if if somebody is in wild card or somebody say if you want to take a punt i think martinelli would be a great one i i mean if you watch it uh watch it i mean obviously we are looking we are thinking that uh, arsenal should win comfortably against him uh, against sheffield so um i like any arsenal transfer in this week uh although they have newcastle next week but i think if you think uh this week and some like from 12 onwards arsenal should be a priority buy that's that's the yeah. first thing Tim. I agree with you on that, to be honest, a bit of a long term planning. And I think Arsenal assets looks great. And I think a lot of people are actually going to play the game with uh, their, their wild card in game week 10. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting that, you know, people are thinking of Saka. But yeah, I've seen different conversation as well. Some people are trying to get um, replace, I think, uh, Madison or Son for Saka and then some of the. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to encourage that, but. Um, Saka is definitely an interesting shout. But who else? Who else from the table? Uh, again, uh, if you see, um, I think As Aston Villa de defenders, I mean, um, D Dine or Cash, I mean, they look fantastic to own, right? Now, because we are actually, most of the people uh, probably going for Cash because of his scoring and because of AGI, but Dine is not far behind, actually. And I don't think... Um, uh, what was the his name uh, moreno he's not fit yet right so the dine could be a good cheaper option as well if say if you find cash is a little bit expensive because if you see um they are fifth uh, on the right flank um for the luton game so uh, again it's also a long little bit long term or like short term say next four game weeks it's a good good buy as well and uh Many people got frustrated with DAB, but if you see here, I mean, DAB would be a great shout this week. So I saw it in Twitter, some places uh, getting rid of, uh, rid of DAB, but uh, if you see, check this out, I mean, you would not think about it because, yeah, I know Watkins was in the central of all the attack, but DAB plays very close to him and he ranked as a midfielder. So I think DAB also a great buy or hold of course because uh, of the zonal uh, matching and also they are the most attacking team right now uh, mm -hmm. i mean no doubt about it right so uh, that's another yeah thing. true um anyone else uh, 
another one probably gordon um i mean the people who have uh, i am jealous of them because he is actually ticking along nicely and if you see he's ranked first against wolves so uh he can you can have one, you can expect at least one return could be multiple right so with 5.6 that is absolutely uh, gold right so uh, when you make your wildcraft wildcard team i think um, you should think about that as well uh, like keeping gordon although their fixture is mixed but they are number one team uh, in terms of attack right in xg so i think gordon is good trippier it, it, TPR's discussion is different. It's difficult, probably some for some people, but Gordon is a great, great one as well. Yeah, and is Modric the one that interests you? In yeah, it's interesting, but the thing is with their fixture, I think um, it will be difficult, right? So because um, their fixture is not good, people are moving to Palmer because of his price and penalty, or more price, I would say, rather penalty thing uh, i think murdick is like uh, 6.3 million so it looks good but brentford is not necessarily that easy game so probably yeah in terms of zonal he's in number four but still i think there are some better options probably right in that mm -hmm. sense yeah and but, there's a uh, discussion about sorry go ahead. there's a discussion a bit no no sorry um there's a bit of a discussion about poro and Udogi. so uh, Yes, yeah, so a bit of a uh, couple of people are a bit disappointed the fact that you know Jogi, I mean Tottenham got a clean sheet, but he was taken off and, and in the 56th minute. So yeah, I'm not sure if that is one of and looking at it the zonal. I'm not sure if people would feel a bit more compelled about going for Poro because I think from there he ranks um, from the in terms of the crosses considered. Yeah, yeah, he's first. So yeah, and of course his attack looks great. Uh, so. Attacking threat looks great. So, yeah, Uduji one actually it was unfortunate because he felt something and they subbed off in 56 minutes. Luckily, probably those who were in decision between Uduji and Poro, it did not hurt that much, only five points. But Poro, like if you see, uh, from the ranking wise, he's a great shout. I mean, if somebody is thinking of getting rid of him this week, uh, not in the wild card, it would be difficult. I mean, he should he should locked in this this gimmick as well i guess yeah i'm not sure if it hurt that much or not but it did hurt me at least um uh, I, got yeah, one, uh, I got a red red arrow because i was just one point behind uh safety and that's because um Udugi was taken off in the 56 minutes so had he played got the clean sheet i would have actually been on a green arrow so yeah there you go i got hurt yeah. <laughs> and anje anje played uh, <laughs> uh fpl before joining tottenham so he should keep him six until 60 minutes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's yeah. true so any a, anything stands out from the next chart i mean next table sorry so here those i think some i know some people went with solanki uh in game we get it's a great uh it, sh it could be a great week for them as well i mean it's a great feature for him so i think so lucky but the thing is uh, to for one week punt it's fine but to transfer i think they have man city and uh, i think liverpool or arsenal so that will be difficult but uh, for this game week so lucky looks absolutely um, a great buy they are number his zonal is number two and uh, one uh, the, that's one player i was actually uh, thinking uh, uh, like if somebody wants some punt as well that is foster is number one and their fixture turning in good as well so uh, i think uh, it's uh, fi in five million it's not bad i know there is marduk over there but foster is not is a bad shout either mm. if no, true, wants true, uh, yeah that's a complete punch i would say but yeah um, you don't know how fpl managers think right so it's it's, yeah. it's difficult to guess everybody's team but anyway, it's a it's a punt. So that's why I think that's that's what makes it very clear for us. Anyway, let's move to the transfers this week and let's see. And of course, we are suggesting Saka for this week. What do you think about Saka? What do you think the zonal suggests? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, he's uh, he should be prioritized by right because although he was he had some injurious care, I think that's the only thing probably people might be thinking. But in terms of um, attacking or fantasy like FPL wise, he's a great 
uh, asset because before game we get, I think he returned almost every game. And if you see here, he already had a chance, 16 chances created and his picture was, except Newcastle, other pictures are good, Burnley, Brentford. Mm -hmm. So they are sixth, ninth. So I think um, Saka, Saka is the first name probably in Arsenal's team shit if he's fit, right? So. Uh, it's a yeah. good suggestion, great suggestion. Basically, I am actually looking to buy him. So uh, I know there is a difficult uh, compromise need to make between uh, Madison son, but it it might pay off with Saka. Yeah, true. And I'm on my wild card, and I can tell you that that dilemma is not really interesting to have. To be yeah, honest, yeah, it's, it's not really great. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, the next transfer suggestion is Mitoma, of course. Uh, what about Mitoma? I mean, I've, I'm sure all of us have seen the uh, the skill that he showed and the video that's making rounds on Twitter about you know he's trying to dribble Kyle Walker and then the assist that he provided to Ansu Fati. Not really an assist, but yeah, yeah the yeah. goal that Ansu Fati scored. So yeah, what about Mitoma? Yeah, um, I mean, Brighton, I think they have the best fixtures like for next at least uh next four weeks right so like if you see sheffield everton they are second and third and even nottingham forest although it says 15th but i think they are not certainly that that, that great team and brighton is a good team to explore that uh, exploit that and mitoma is their talisman uh, although probably i think in 6.5 he worth it right so i i think it's a good suggestion so uh, i was actually uh in little bit confusion to buy like uh, i i i need i'll bring probably two midfielder this week so this helps because i think uh, mitoma is a great buy um due to although some people are a little bit confused about x minutes but i think it's fine right and because he's the great great player and he created eight chances but there, there are some tough fixtures um, before so these fixtures are the great one people are waiting so i think He's a great buy. Yeah. And I think they, you should also look at the football aspect of it uh, yeah. and also the psychological yeah. aspect of a footballer, to be honest. He signed four years contract. So, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. he's he's confident now. And I think it gives him a moral boost, and, you know, the confidence that brings along when you sign a new contract. Yep. So, yeah, that's that's something to another to keep an eye. So, let's move to the last section of the team of the week. And here it is. Um, anything? That we have not really discussed or anything that you want to touch upon mm, yeah i mean we already almost discussed all the all the things um the defense is my defense so i'm happy with it mm -hmm. uh i i have these three players and i think cool cool interesting shout in this week uh but other than that it makes sense we already touched all the players right so it's it's a yeah. it's it's the right uh zonal team i guess yeah, so I think that's it for this week. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much again, uh, Zidane Zed, uh, for joining us today. And of course, all the very best. Our audience, he just became a father. So congratulate him, please. And yeah, thank you. thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. But until then, we'll meet next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Very